Hello, my name is Joel Crest. I'm a developer with Econo Systems, and today I'm going to do a walk through the process of displaying custom fields and content query web parts in Office SharePoint Server 2007. So I'm sitting in Microsoft Office SharePoint Server 2007, and I've got a Project Stash Reports document library that I've added to my site here, and I've associated a Project Stash Report content type with that document library. And the Project Stash Report content type has some site columns that I've created and, and, and added to it. Uh, the project name, project status, project status summary, and project owner fields. And what I want to do is back here on my home page, be able to display items from that document library that meet certain criteria and have that be dynamically updated as I add and remove and change the status of items in that document library. So I'm going to use the content query web part to actually do that for me. So the first thing I'm going to do is to come in here and choose to edit the page. And then I'm going to come down and in the top zone here, web part zone, I'm going to choose to add a web part. And I'm going to select the content query web part and say add. And then if I scroll down, once it's added, I can see that I now have down here in the top zone the content query web part displaying its default list of items on the site. So now the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to set some of the properties of this web part to make it work with my Project Status Reports document library. So I choose to modify properties. Come over here now and expand the query category. I can choose to tell it to show items from the following list. And then go out and browse for my Project Status Reports document library and say OK. And then I'm going to tell it to look for document library list types, specifically from the Project Status Reports content type group. Now I'm going to select the project stash report. That's the only choice in there. And I'm going to apply some filters. I'm going to tell it to filter on showing you project status reports that have a project status equal to requires attention or project status is equal to might need attention. And then I'm going to come down and in the presentation category here, I'm going to choose to group items by project status. And the last thing I'm going to do down here is in the appearance category, change the title to be projects to watch. And say OK. So at this point here, if I come down now, I can see that the web part now is displaying its title projects to watch. It's got two groups, um, those that might need attention, those that require attention, and it's displaying them to me um, grouped by their status. Now what I want to do is I want to modify the data and the content that's being rendered here for the items from my document library, and I want to show a little bit more information about the items that are being pulled back, those items that might need attention, those items that require attention. Specifically, I want to show the name of the project, the owner of the project, and the, and the project status summary text as well. Now I can't very easily or I can't specify all of those fields using the user interface um, provided on the tool pane here for the content query web part. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to modify the properties of the web part um, to make that possible. So I'm going to first choose to export my web part. Choose to save it. And I'm going to export it to a local folder here. Okay, now that I've exported that web part, I'm going to pop over here to SharePoint Designer. And I'm going to choose to edit that web part file. And the web part file is just XML, so I'm going to do it in SharePoint Designer since it's XML aware. It gives me the nice pretty format and everything else. And what I'm going to now do is I'm going to modify the contents and the properties in this file here, and I'm going to tell it to pull in and tell the web part, rather, the content query web part, to pull in the additional fields um, that I've defined for my, my content type, my project stash reports content type. I need to do that because by default, the content query web part does not pull in all fields for items from the list that it's working with. So I'm going to come in here and I'm going to modify the common view fields property and tell it to pull in my additional fields that I want to ultimately be able to render. So I'm going to select the common view fields property and replace it with my own value. So what I've done now is I've specified a column name and a data type and done that multiple times with each, each pair um, delimited by a semicolon. So I've got the project name, subtype so type text, semicolon, the project owner, 
its data type is type text, semicolon, and the project status summary and its data type is just a type text as well. And now you'll notice also that I'm specifying um, the space character in, in the column names um, as encoded with this value here, 0x0020. And the way I know to do that is um, I know that I need to specify the internal name as SharePoint refers to these columns here. And so the way I get that internal name is uh, through a different ways, through a couple of different ways. One way is to go up and look at the properties for the column, the site column in this case here. And when I go to the properties page, if I look up in the URL displayed in the address line in the browser, I can see and look at the field query string value and that tells me then what the internal field name is that SharePoint is using for this field. I also know that, tip, that in general when you have a space character and a name of a column like that, SharePoint encodes it with this value right here. So what I'm doing is specifying the encoded name. So this will tell the content query web part then to pull back the project name, project owner, and project status summary values from each of the items that matches the query uh, for those items, in other words, that have a project status of might need attention or requires attention. So I'm going to go ahead now and save the changes to this file. Okay, now that we've modified the content query web part and told it to pull in these additional fields from our document library uh, for the items that it's finding and pulling back based on the query that it's using, we need to now make the content query web part render those additional fields, those custom fields, when it shows uh, the results of the query. So the way we're going to do that is we're going to modify the XSLT transformation file that's used by the content query web part to figure out how to format and how to render items. So the way we do that is to come in here and we're going to open the site that we're working with, our SharePoint site. We're going to go ahead and choose to view the folder list. And if we come down here to the style library, expand that and expand the XSL style sheets, we see the item style.xsl file. This is the XSL style sheet that's used by the content query web part to figure out how to format and render items that it's displaying. So we're going to go ahead and open that. And we'll double click on it and we'll say yes, we want to check it out from under source control. Okay, so now at this point here, we're looking at all the styles that are defined that we can choose from when we're formatting the styles um, and, and telling the content query web part how to render the items that it's, it's pulling back from its query. So what we're going to do is we're going to come in here, we're going to paste in our own custom style here. So what I've gone ahead and done is to find my own style called custom style. And I've added down here in the div, this is the portion that actually tells um, the content query web part, rather tells the transformer, the XSL transformer, how to actually render the output that's going to be displayed by the um, content query web part. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show the project name, project owner, and project status summary. And I'm specifying the field names right here. Now you'll notice that these look different than what I was specifying in the .web part file. It's got this extra encoding here in front of it. And you may be asking, how did I know to put that in there? Well, the way I did that and the way I figured that out, that it was different from what I was specifying in the .web part file for these column names, was by using a little block of um, XSL code here, which would basically loops through and displays each of the field names that's being passed to the transformer so I can see exactly how the style sheet is receiving the field names and render and referencing the field names and I know how to refer to them down here so that it matches. So actually I had to do that first once I got the field name then I was able to come in here and specify then the field name as I saw it coming through. So let's go ahead and save our changes. Yes we want to update and customize. Okay, so now I'm going to switch back over to my SharePoint site. And now we still have our initial instance of the Content Query web part sitting here on our web page. Now, it, this, this version here was not configured to pull in the additional columns from our Project Status Reports document library. So I'm going to go ahead and get rid of this version of the Content Query web part. And I'm going to go ahead then and choose now to import our modified version to specify those additional fields. And if I come over here, I can choose to browse for our edited.web part file and then upload it. And then I can come down here, choose the zone, and then import it into that zone. Okay, let's go ahead and close this out. Now, if we come down here, we notice that we now have our modified web part visible here, but it still looks exactly the same, and that's because we have not um, updated um, 
and set the style on our web part here to tell it to use our custom style. So let's go ahead and do that. So let's go ahead and choose modify shared web part. And now if we come over here and on the tool pane, we can choose under the presentation category in the style section. We can now come down here and choose our custom style, which is now visible, and say OK. Now if we come down here, we see a bunch of stuff. We see our um, project name, project owner, and project status. Some are successfully being pulled back from the items that are matching the query, but we're also seeing all this information here. Now, if you remember, this is coming from that XSL block that I added um, of XML code there to um, XSL code, rather, to display the fields as they're being passed into the XSL style sheet here. So now here's where we can see the extra encoding that I needed to specify. And this is how I figured out how to do that. So we see that we've got that coming in before the space character in each one of our field names. And so that maps back over then to our style sheet here where we specified those values here in our field names here in our XSL style sheet. So now we can go ahead and clean up our style sheet, removing these items here. Let's pop back over here and get out of edit mode. OK, now if we come in here and we choose to save our now cleaned up style sheet, OK, and come back over here and now do a refresh. And we get our now cleaned up output here. And it shows our items coming back. And we no longer see our output of the fields that are being passed to the XSL style sheet. So we were able to take an instance of the content query web part that we added to our home page here. And after configuring it to work with our project status reports document library and the content type in that document library, we we're able to export that instance of the content query web part and make some changes to it to tell it to ask for and request and pull in the additional custom fields from our document library. And then we modified the XSL file style sheet that's used by the content query web part to format and render items that match the query that it's performing and get it to then actually render our custom fields successfully here um, when it showed the web part on our home page.